Just the other day, I did a video about why I left Android for iOS. But it started making me think about all the videos I've done recently with the Amazon Renewed series of uh, videos, where I go to Amazon, I buy last year's flagships, and sometimes even the year before, and kind of review them now. Uh, if you want to see some of that and you miss them, I'll leave a link in the description below and, and a comment and in the end screen. But here's the thing. It reminded me of some things that I actually missed about not only Android, but Samsung specifically. There are some really great things about Samsung phones and Android phones in general, and I'm going to tell you about some of the things that made me kind of miss that. I was rekindled with these phones, like the uh, Galaxy S10 Plus right here, and the things that I were just, I, I looked at and I'm like, man, I, I wish I could still do that, which you can't do on an iPhone with iOS. What are those things? I bet you you won't even be able to guess some of them because they're just kind of personalized to me. But I'll tell you about all of them. Right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Now, like I said at the beginning, my main phone is an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I, I really enjoy using it. There's a lot of great reasons to use this phone. I made a video about it. Make sure you check it. Put a little link in the description in the end screen. Make sure you watch that first, because I think it's kind of important to have watched that video before you watch this one. The reality is, is even though I'm pretty happy on iOS with an iPhone, after having been a very long time user of Android, there's some things that I miss because iOS is definitely not perfect. I mean, it's just not. Obviously, uh, both operating systems have places where they can improve, but there's some things I really miss. Now, if you watch that other video, you'll know that some of the things I mentioned are things that I said are great about Android, but I don't really care about because I didn't really use them. Even though I'll promote those things for people who are looking to get into Android or a Samsung phone in general, I just didn't really get into them, like DeX and uh, even Samsung Pay, which I think is amazing, I just didn't use it very often. And some of the other things that Android phones allow you to do just aren't something that I use. I just need some very core things to work for me. But that doesn't mean that I don't miss things from the Android phones that are out there. And I'm kind of surrounded by Android phones right now. I've lost track, but I have well over 10 or 12 phones that I've gotten just over the last month. Uh, all of them Android. I'm literally surrounded by Android. I've got phones here that you don't even know that I have yet. But the Galaxy S10 Plus is reminding me of a couple of really cool things that Samsung does, and even Android does in general, that has always endeared me to the operating system. Let's talk about the first one, which is probably the smallest of all the things, live wallpapers. Now, whenever I do a video about one of my Galaxy phones, I always have some type of wa live wallpaper going, and people always ask me in the comments, what wallpaper is that? And I gotta be honest, I don't know. Like a lot of these I ordered uh, on the phone many years ago and I just continue to download them. Th this is no exception. This one is super cool. Uh, it's like a laser thingy mabobber. I have no idea where I got it from. But that's the cool thing about Samsung phones. They have the theme option. So not only can you change your live wallpaper, but you can also change the theme of your phone and make it look completely different. I loved doing this at least once every other month to make it feel like a brand new experience, a brand new phone. Even though was, a lot of times it was just icon and color changes, it made a big difference. And of course, this goes back to Android allowing you to customize everything. And while I said in my last video, that's not always the best thing, there are a lot of things that you should be able to customize on your phone that I think Apple is really missing out on. And making my phone look like I want it to look with the icons, wallpaper, live wallpaper, everything that I want should be one of those things. And while you can change the wallpaper on iPhone, listen, it is not even close. The amount of things you can do wallpaper and theme wise on like a Galaxy S10 Plus versus an iPhone, it's a wrap baby, uh, Galaxy all the way. And that's just a small thing. Of course, themes and wallpapers, you might be thinking, well, that's kind of a small thing. It's not a big deal, Travis. Like, why is that such a big thing? It's just something you look at every single day for hours on end. I kind of like to look at what I want to look at. Now, this next one might be personal to me. Maybe none of you will care about this, but as someone who has a YouTube channel and has to get footage off of phones, being able to access the entire file system and be able to put files wherever I want to and be able to see them either on the phone or on my computer 
is pretty clutch. And iOS is pretty locked down when it comes to that. Like it's, you can't really drag and drop files to an iPad or an iPhone. You can take them off, but it's very limited. This thing just basically becomes like a new USB drive when you plug it into your computer. It's just that simple. And that goes for pretty much all Android phones. Like that's just functionality built in. And it pretty much has always been that way. That is, again, a thing that I love about Android is the ability to use it like a tool. It doesn't control you, you control it. And while most of the cool things you can do on Android are things that I don't use on a daily basis, being able to access the files on my phone to be able to move things off or put things on quickly is something I would use. And without something like an iMac or a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air or something to be able to airdrop from my computer to my phone, it's a whole big thing where I've got to upload, maybe even send an email to myself or something stupid. It's not, it's not great. Okay, so maybe you're not a creator and that's not a big thing. Well, I'll tell you, if you use your phone any type of way that's at least even a little bit productive, this next thing is gonna be something that's gonna to speak to you. And I think you're gonna agree. True multitasking. I've talked about this in other videos before, but it's a huge weak point in the iOS ecosystem and on the iPhone. That doesn't have true multitasking, like at all. And you know, I'm not even just talking about things like a real good split screen option. Like that is a huge deal. But the fact that I can literally lose an entire loaded program randomly from my iPhone for no real apparent reason is perplexing. Just tell me what the rules are, Apple. Samsung has enough RAM in their phones that it doesn't really happen that often, but as a matter of fact, they added a new feature where you can stick a program into RAM, like you can save it. It goes nowhere. And for me, I think that that is just another thing for someone who wants to get productivity out of their phone that just is amazing. I can literally open an app, you know, hit the home screen, put it away, come back hours later, open up three more apps, put the phone away for a couple more hours, come back and open that first app and it's still gonna be there. On my iPhone, it's, I mean, it's like rolling dice. You don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it'll stay there, sometimes it won't. And while yes, most iPhones don't have as much RAM as Android, they don't typically seem to need it. Regardless, this is a bad user experience, something that Apple is supposed to be known for. A good user experience, that is. So as far as I'm concerned, that's just something that is just superior on Android. I know some of you are gonna be confused. You're gonna be like, what you were saying bad things about Android the other day. No, I wasn't. I was just telling you things that I didn't really care for on Android. And now I'm telling you the things that I do. Bruh, they need to have a license to watch YouTube videos because some of these people, man, oof. But one of the things I miss the most is the way that every manufacturer looks at Android differently and looks at their phones differently. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. This is the OnePlus 7 Pro from 2019. And this is the TL TCL's newest phone, the 10 Pro. $400 phone with all types of really cool flagship type specs. None of these have a similar back. They have different amounts of cameras on the back and different configurations. This one has four. They have different number of like front screen, um, front facing cameras. They all look different. I like that. They're completely different. If I like this style, I'm all about the OnePlus, but maybe I don't want a camera that pops up and down. I'm not stuck with that option. I can go with a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Maybe I don't like the dual punch on the top right hand corner. Maybe that's not for me. I can go to TCL. They have a punch hole right in the middle. It's brand new and it's only $400. Options. And while Apple is trying to be better to give more options across more price points, the reality is they're mostly the same phone. Especially when the iPhone 12 comes out and they're almost gonna look exactly alike. It's hard to tell one from the other. Here's the thing. If I'm honest about everything, when I was going through the Amazon renewed uh, reviews and I got to the Apple iPhone XS, it's so similar to my 11 Pro Max other than size that I kind of struggled to come up with differences. Like with iPhones, they're almost exactly the same. There's not a lot of difference, especially since the iPhone 10. Most of the differences are in the specs, if even. And with Android phones, you have completely different looking phones. Some of them function differently and the manufacturers try different things with the operating system. I love that. Not all of these things are pros, as I mentioned in my last video. Of course, things like updates are a big weakness on Android. 
But the fact that there's so many different types is really interesting at different price points. TCL has a phone at $250. I just got a phone with some rather flagship specs for $200 new. There are no iPhones at that price point. And that's because of the nature of Android. It's left to the manufacturers to interpret Android in any way they see fit. I mean, you have different features on each phone. The phones themselves look different. I just love the fact that there's so much choice. Now, when Apple nails something like the actual fit and finish of a phone, I don't care that there's not a lot of choices. But the reality is I inevitably like something else. I mean, that's just the way it is. And with Apple, you don't get a lot of choices. With Android, you are spoiled for choices. There's so many. And I know some of you are thinking in comments that yes, these are some of the reasons that you love Android. I'd love to hear more if you leave some more comments. And as small as some of these things are, they are things that I miss. Again, I will eventually go back to Android and I will love those things. And then I'm gonna miss some things on Apple. I could carry two phones, but I really don't need two phones. I, I just want one perfect phone. Tell me in the comments below what that perfect phone would be. And make sure you check out that video where I talked about why I went to iOS. It's right here. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.